We want to welcome those who are watching by Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. We don't know how long that's going to be able to be broadcast, so we're going to take advantage of that right now. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good to see all of you here this morning. I'm watching those that usually sit here by faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hope they're home watching. Uh, I don't know if they are, but praise God if they are. I'm going to say, Sister Abby down in Florida, God bless you. We love you. Uh, for Pastor Sajeev and those in India that are watching and those that are also back in, in Africa and Kenya and some other places uh, that I've noticed that I've been watching. God bless you. Amen. We're glad that you're here. I just felt like the Lord was taking a different direction this morning, uh, how things were unfolding and what was happening. So um, I'm going to preach something different. Uh, so bear with me. What? Oh, he's got one up there already. Boy, Bobby is quick, isn't he? There's no other name. Hallelujah. You know, I've been challenged myself, and I, I want to say this. Now, I believe, and I want to say this, that God uses doctors. How many believe that? I want to straightly say out, that out front. So there's like a disclaimer, okay? That I believe that God uses doctors. But I believe that God can also sovereignly heal and deliver. Amen? I can tell you from personal experience years ago, being on drugs, being on alcohol, uh, living in the nightclub business, being a womanizer, all of those things that I was in the world. And I can tell you from personal experience, when I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, he delivered me because I came to the name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. I came, uh, I came, uh, it came above Alcoholics Anonymous. I came up above the... Narcotics Anonymous, I came above the psychologist, I came above all the doctors, all the ways of man that they try to get deliverance from. I came to the one name that is above every name, hallelujah. I, you can sit there like a lump on the log, but I, I'm telling you, I'm excited this morning about the name of Jesus, that he delivered you. And if you've been delivered, if you have been set free, every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. <laughs> Whose phone is that? Please shut it off. You're not that important. <laughs> I better make sure mine's off. And it is. It is. Praise God. But I want you to know that, that those things, if you've been delivered, how many have been delivered? Now, I'm, I, mean, I mean supernaturally. I'm not talking about your own willpower stopping something. I'm talking about where God came down and touched you and delivered you and took you out of that place that you were in. Oh, God, uh, there's no other name. Hallelujah. And I can tell you that I've been free from drugs and I've been free from alcohol for over 30 years, 35 years, maybe 40 years. I don't know. I lost count. But I'm here to tell you that there's still power in the blood of Jesus. There's still power in the name of Jesus. And he's been challenging me. You know, because I'm out and I'm always, I'm here and there and I'm all, all over the place, you know. And uh, I'm sorry, I will not wear a mask driving all by myself. Okay, I think that's dumb. But God's been challenging me and saying, do you really believe me in these last days? Do you really trust me in these last days? Well, I've been home. I wake up one morning, and I feel lousy. I felt scratchy. Not today. I'm talking about a couple of weeks ago. And the first thing the devil says in your ear is you got COVID. And I said, devil, you're a liar. And I said, and this is how I pray. I said, father, you told me to trust you. 
So I bind every bacterial, every viral infection in my body, and I command it to leave right now in Jesus' name. And within an hour, hear me now, felt completely fine. And I believe that we need to start to learn to trust Him more. Because if we don't trust Him, and you put your... Your, your belief in man, you will fail. In fact, the Bible says, Woe unto them that put their trust in the arm of the flesh. Woe unto them that go down to Egypt for help. Because you know what? You can cry all you want to. You can try all you want to. I know people right now, that are so caught up in alcohol, so caught up in drugs. And they refuse to rely on the cross of Jesus. They refuse to allow God to take that thing out of them. And you want to know why? Because they like it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You might remember the man at the beautiful gate. Been crippled all his life. Think about this. He was born that way. Say it with me, born that way. He was born that way. And in today's society, in today's thinking, well, he was born that way, there's no help, there's no cure for him. Come on, if we're honest, that's what we think sometimes. But I like the conjunction that makes a difference. But God. But God. But God. And here this man at the beautiful gate, lame from his mother's womb, crippled, can't walk, had to be picked up every single day and brought to this gate. And what did he do for a living? He begged for money. And people gave him money, feeling sorry for him. Which naturally happens. You know, when you're driving and you come to the end of a, a street or an exit somewhere or you see people that are out there panhandling. Please understand, a lot of that is just a business. But here this man was, had a legitimate reason for begging. Understand that there was no welfare system. There was no government assistance back then. You were on your own. And when you're on your own, you've got to depend upon Jesus. But there's no other name. No other name. And so here he was begging for money one day. He had gone there for over 20 years. How many of you have been waiting for a miracle? Don't give up. How many of you have been waiting for God to do something in your life? Don't give up. There's no other name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No other name. No matter how long you have to wait, you just keep trusting. You just keep believing on God. You know, uh, I believe it's Hebrews 11 says that there were those who per perished without receiving the promise, but yet they didn't stop believing in the promise. They kept believing the promise. So don't give up on God. Don't give up that there's no other name because there is no other name. And here he was at this beautiful gate like every other day of his life, 20 years or more, being carried every single day down to that gate. And by the way, that word beautiful gate means process of time. Did you know that? 
in the process of time. How many know that God has a timetable? Time and sometimes His timetable is not our timetable. But God has a timetable. And in that timetable, so many people give up just before something is about to happen. And that's when the devil comes and he'll press upon you even more to give up. You have to stop and ask the question, why is the devil pressing me to give up so hard right now? And the reason is because he knows that your breakthrough is about to take place. Oh, hallelujah. Here this man, every single day of his life, was carried to this gate. Maybe waiting. Maybe hoping for something to take place. I'm sure that he saw Jesus. I'm sure that, Je I'm sure that Jesus walked in and out of that gate many times on his way to the temple. And yet Jesus never stopped to heal that man until the appointed time. I want you to know that God has appointed times for everything. Read Revelation. You see there's an appointed time when he releases all the evil angels that are in chains. God has an appointed time. It is an appointed time for man to die once and after that the judgment. There's an appointed time. God always has an appointed time for you and for me. And we have to be patient and we have to allow the process for God to work in us what He wants to work in us and so that He can test us, if you will, to see if we'll be faithful. You say, well, I don't know if God does that. Well, check it out in, in, the, in your Bible. Many times he proved Israel to see. Many nations he left unconquered to prove Israel's love for him. Come on, somebody. See if they would mix in with the world. Can I tell you, but that's the problem. Just when our breakthrough comes, just when that thing is about to break open, we seem to turn away or we seem to have a disheart. You know, the Bible says hope deferred maketh the heart sick. And a lot of times when we're hoping and hoping and things don't seem to come our way, we give up. And just at that moment where we're giving up, God's saying, man, I was just about to do that for you. Now I've got to take you through all the way around again and bring you back. And I'm speaking to those who are watching. Some of you are bound by alcohol. Some of you are bound by drugs. And you let that thing grab a hold of your life. Let me tell you something, that thing will drag you down. You'll get worse and worse and worse. And especially the time that we're living in, you're going to get worse. You're going to get worse. You're going to get worse if, unless you turn to Jesus. Your drug addiction is going to get worse. Your sexual addiction is going to get worse. Why? Because the devil knows his time is short. And he knows that. So this man sitting at the gate every single day waiting for people to give him money so that he'll have enough for us to sustain him for that day and go back home. I want you to think about that every single day. Every day. I mean, think about it. Sometimes when we're not feeling well, or you know, we don't want nobody to do nothing for us. We, 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 we want to prove that we can handle this on our own. And I can tell you that spiritually, too, in this church a lot of times, because a lot of you go through things you never call me for prayer. I can handle that. I can deal with that. That's good. Go to God, and if nothing happens... The Bible says one puts a thousand to flight, two will put ten thousand to flight. He says if two of you agree is touching anything, not one. 
Come on, somebody. Don't go, don't go Episcopalian on me now. And here he was every single day sitting at the temple. Think about at first how humiliating it must have been that his parents suggested to him, listen, you're, you're getting older now. You've got you to gotta get some money. Go to the temple. You, be like a beggar. You, at least you get something out of your life. You can't walk. You're lame. You've got to depend upon people. Don't you want to be independent? Don't you want to have some independence in your life? I want you to think about the emotional state of this man every single day. And then there was this one day Verse 3. When Peter and John were about to enter into the temple, he saw them walking toward him and said, Do you have a few bucks you can spare? Do you have some change that you can spare? Think about that. Now, this is going to throw a lot of prosperity preachers overboard. Verse 4. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, he said, look on us. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you had to ask something from somebody. Sometimes you don't even want to look at the person. You're just kind of embarrassed. You just kind of, you know, look away. But Peter said, I want you to look on us. And then when he looked on them, he was looking at them, verse 5. He looked at them, you know, and he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something from him, from them. He was expecting to receive something tangible in the natural money, as always. You know, we take it for granted because we have food every day. We have a hot shower every day. We have a warm house every day. But sometimes God's challenging you and say, trust me for something supernatural. Why don't you trust me for a miracle? Why don't you trust me to open doors for you in the supernatural realm. I'm not talking about the spookiness. I'm talking about things that God can open up, can make you walk into a place and see somebody like that. And instead of getting your money out and giving it to them and saying goodbye, see you later, maybe you can say something like Peter said. Next verse, he says this. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Wow. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I've got something that's greater than silver and gold. I've got something inside of me that is far more valuable than silver or gold. You're looking for you're looking for something to be met in the natural, but I'm coming your way and I'm going to show you something that you haven't seen before. You're going to see God do something supernatural through us. Man, that didn't get you excited? <laughs> Come on, don't get, us, don't get a, a Episcopalian on me now. He said, but such as I have, I'll give you in the name. Oh, hear me now. In the name. 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 In the name, oh glory, in the name.
And in the original, it would be in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know if the man was just sitting there looking at him. But then it says, Peter did this. Next verse. And he took him by the right hand. Is that your right hand? Okay. He took him by the right hand. And he lifted him up. I want you to know the miracle didn't come until he grabbed him. Because faith without works is dead. Took him by the hand. I'm sure the devil was on his shoulder saying, what in the world are you doing? Don't you understand this man is lame from his mother's? His feet are all contorted and crippled. With man it may be impossible, but with God all things are possible. Hallelujah. And here he was with his feet all crippled up. And until Peter went and grabbed that right hand, and it says he took him by the hand and he lifted him up. Show that Peter had faith. With those crooked feet and legs, he lifted him up. He didn't say, go get his crutches. He didn't say, get some men to help, pick them up. He grabbed them by the hand. He says, in the name of Jesus, you get up. You get up! Rise up! Then he told them to go home and wait a while. Come on, somebody. It says, and immediately his feet and his ankle bones receive strength. But what caused it? What was the, the initial response of that? He didn't say in the name of Allah, in the name of Buddha. He said in the name of Jesus. Can I tell you the name of Jesus today has been so watered down? You hear it almost every single day as a cuss word. The devil has secretly, covertly tried to nullify that name by mocking it, ridiculing it, make it making that name non-essential. Because I'm telling you right now, you can mention the name God generic. You can. You see it every day. You see, the, you see the people in Washington, if something tragic happens, says, oh, let's take this to God in prayer. Oh, this person that was a celebrity is a tra has a tragedy. You'll see it on Facebook. Oh, everybody, let's pray to God. But it's God according to what you believe. But if you come and you say, but we're going to pray in the name of Jesus. There's an antagonistic spirit that rises up. Notice it's not a spirit of anti-God. It's a spirit of anti-Christ. They hate that name. Jesus. Devils hate that name. Jesus. Because the name of Jesus 
All power and authority has been given unto him in heaven and on earth. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And they know that. You even hear testimonies of people that maybe they're dreaming. I heard a pastor was telling me this one time he had a bad dream and he, he was trying to get out the name Jesus and it wouldn't come out in his dream. What does that tell you? That there's a spirit behind that that's trying to stifle or getting you to stop speaking the name of Jesus. That's why he hates praise and worship. He wants you to sit there with your mouth shut. He wants you to sit there and mimic. Boom, 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 boom. He doesn't want you to get into praise of that name because that name will do something different in you. That name will change you. That name will heal you. That name will deliver you. It's at the name of Jesus. And he took him by that right hand and he lifted him up and immediately his ankle, his feet and ankle bones received strength. Oh, come on, somebody. That means at one time they had no strength. They couldn't hold him up. And then Peter and John told him to do the Episcopalian thing. Go home and rest. Don't put too much pressure on him now. <laughs> Come on, somebody. No, next verse. And he, leaping up, stood and walked. Come on. He was walking all by himself. And he entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping, and praising God. Oh, come on, somebody. He was happy. He received his miracle. Hallelujah. In verse 9, hallelujah. All the people saw him. It was a visible testimony. He didn't care what people thought. He didn't care what people might think of him. They saw him walking and praising God. It was a public pronouncement of something God had done. Can I tell you, in these last days, people are going to need to see the power of God. And in these last days, He wants to use you. Come on, somebody. I didn't get one amen. I got one over there. Thank you. God wants to use you. He wants you to lay hands on the sick and they recover. Yeah, but Pastor, I got, I got some things wrong with me. So what? But what if I fail? It's not about you. When God called Brother David Diamond into the healing ministry, he was just a young man, maybe 19 years old, 20 years old. He went into the hospitals. He started praying for people. He went into the emergency room. He went into the place where there was real urgent need. He was at the bedside of a, of a person and he started praying for them. And all of a sudden the hot monitor went doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, boop. You know what that means, right? They died. He said for the first seven people he prayed for, they all died. Did he give up? No. 
Devil went to him and said, Ah, David, ah, you're going to go pray for people to be, be healed and your own little girl, your little daughter, Buffy, died prematurely. Yeah, your God's going to heal. Look, at you wouldn't even heal your little daughter, Buffy. I've been to Buffy's grave. But she's going to rise again in the resurrection. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew, verse 10, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were all filled with wonder and amazement at which had happened unto him. When's the last time somebody was amazed and wondering at your life? You know why? Because most Christians walk around like this. Come on, I'm telling you the truth. Our shoulders are struck down. Can you imagine me coming to you like this? Would you like to accept Jesus? You want to say, get out of here. What has he done for you? What has he done for you? He healed my body. That's what he's done for me. Oh, yes, he's healed my body. What he's done for me. Oh, yes, he's healed my body. That's what he's done for me. Hallelujah. What was that song? Do you remember that song? Yeah, but what, how did the rest of it go? I know, but what's the beginning of it? Yeah, yeah. How's the beginning of that go? No, it isn't. that's another one. That's another one. We used to sing it at uh, Emmanuel Assembly of God. Oh, you don't know like I do what the Lord has done for me. Oh, you don't know like I do. What the Lord has done for me, oh, you don't know like I do. What the Lord has done for me, I'm on fire, fire for the Lord. He healed my body. That's what he's done for me. Come on. You don't know like I do. But how are they going to know unless you tell them? I asked you before, how many of you have had a miracle in your life? God has done something in your life. Raise your hand. Oh, share it with somebody. Share it with somebody. Tell them. Let me tell you what God has done. Let me tell you what I used to be. You know, because they see you now so pretty. Beautiful long dresses, little scarves, so conservative. You were a wild donkey, weren't you? Come on, somebody. You ladies, how you used to dress in the world? I mean, if you, if you look good. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what I'm talking about? Legs all hanging out, short mini skirts. halter tops. Come on. I never knew why they called it that name. But look what the Lord has done. Now, I don't mean to offend anybody that might be watching or somebody that may be here. Used to be one of them cigarette suckers. Sucking in those cigarettes. 
I call them coffin nails. Come on. Cancer sticks, but I call them coffin nails. And sure enough, they'll nail you right in that coffin. Even make you cough. <laughs> I can never understand that. As a Christian now, I look back and I say, Lord, how could I have been so stupid? Like my head was in a cloud of smoke all the time. Think about it. And you'd have one after another. You'd be smoking one after another, one after another, and the place you were in was all filled with smoke. Things get all yellow and stained, and clothes get stained, and... Walls get stained and drapes get stained. We do the stupidest things. But they had noticed something happened amazing. Come on, somebody. Verse 16 says this. And his name. Come on. And his name. Through faith. In his name. Not faith in the preacher's name. Or the evangelist's name. Or the apostle's name, or the church denomination name, and his name through faith in his name, not faith in your own faith. Because you can walk around all day long saying, I believe I'm healed, 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 I believe I'm healed. That doesn't mount to a hill of beans. Because you'll be walking that till the day Jesus comes. It's not about your confession. It's about your possession. Through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom you see testify. It was visible and no knowledge wise. Yea, the faith which is by him, Jesus, hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. He was made whole. Perfect soundness. In the presence of them all, there was a testimony. There is no other name. No other name. You're going to have to learn to trust Him in these last days. Now, I'm not telling you you can't go to a doctor. I'm not saying that. But I remember Brother Diamond sharing a testimony with me. I don't know if he ever shared it with you, but at one time when he was first married and they lived in a little tiny apartment, I think maybe he did share it, that he had asthma real bad. Remember that? He used to breathe like that. He'd be so constricted in his breathing. He said he was one night he woke up and he couldn't breathe. Was, you ever been have a breathing problem where you can't breathe? It's very scary. He said he woke up dying. He said, and she woke up. What, David? I can't breathe. He said all she did was lay her hand on me and go, hunga booga, look, look, booga. Spoken tongues. That was it. Rolled over, went back to sleep. He said he got up and he went and got his medicine, his, his asthma medicine, and a glass of Tang. He was, mixes it with Tang. How many remember Tang? If you're old enough, you remember Tang, right? 
And he poured the medicine in the tang and he, and he, God spoke to him and said, I thought you said you were going to trust me. Now, don't go out and run and do what that diamond did because God told him to do this. God don't tell you to do it. Don't do it. Because you'll be like this. <laughs> so he said, David, I thought you said you were going to trust me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to trust you. Took the tang, threw it down the sink. Went back to bed and said, God, you know, as he's praying in himself, he said, God, I'm going to trust you. If I die, I die. He went to sleep. He said the next day he woke up, and for the last 35, 40 years, he's never had another asthma attack all of his life. So you can, if you want to, I want to trust Jesus. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Trust Him for the impossible. Trust Him for the supernatural that goes above the natural realm. Well, I don't know if He does that anymore today, Pastor. He does. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Who else do you know that can take a ha an axe head and make it float? Well, that's against nature. That's against the that's against the laws of gravity. God wouldn't do that. Yes, he did. Read your Bible. He made an axe head float. Come on. By throwing a little stick in the water. A metal axe head came up to the surface and floated. Mm -hmm. He's a miracle-working God. Hallelujah. He works miracles. Do you believe God for miracles this morning? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, He's an on-time God. He's a miracle-working God. And chapter 4, verse 12, I'll close with this, says, Neither... 4.12 Neither Neither Is there Salvation That's not only your salvation For your soul That's salvation for your deliverance That's salvation for your healing That's salvation for your Your problems That's salvation for your finances Come on somebody He's a complete God. He knows what you have need of even before you ask. Right? He says, I'm going to meet all your need according to my riches and glory. Right? I am the God that healeth you. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. One, one scripture says saved. Another one says delivered. He's all that you need. Hallelujah. When you're down and the devil's ready to kick you, remind him of this one thing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Jesus said, my joy shall be in you. So why are you walking around? Come on. We should be the, even going through the valley, even going through the flood, even going through all that. He said, I'm not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. We don't believe the word. We don't believe it because we don't act on it. We just quote it. Come on. When you travel the places I've been, you better not have any fear. Come on, somebody. 
Maybe the, maybe the Lord needs to throw you in a situation where you, you'll come right up smack dab with fear. And I know some of you are saying, yeah, but I already got my, my LTC license. People are like, what's that? License to carry. <laughs> There's something more powerful than a handgun. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. And it's not Superman. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. He can take you further than you even can imagine. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must, say must, be saved. Do you know there's an organization out there today? Started, they did a, doctors did a, a um, study on this. That's what I was going to preach this morning. About how this belief system has eroded the uh, teenagers. And this belief system has, has not only affected teenagers, but also, and millenniums, millennials, but also other people. Maybe I'll get to it next week. But there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Let me ask you do you need a miracle from God today? Don't look to your pastor. I can only come and pray with you. Have you been oppressed? Have you been depressed? Have you been worried and concerned about the world and the way that Biden has taken us back down the, the road to globalization? I'm not worried. Because they can take this whole world, but I still have Jesus. They can come and take my house, take my money, take my cars. That's not going to change who I am. Because you know why? I'm not attached to those things. Those things are only for me to use. This isn't my home. This isn't my life. This is not my eternal life. I'm not going to live forever on earth. I'm going to live forever with him. If they take my home, I got a mansion waiting for me. If they take my money, I'm going to walk on streets of gold. If they try to take my health, I'm going to be 100% whole when I make it to heaven. And if they kill me, they do me a favor, I don't have to pay for funeral expenses. They'll probably throw me in a hole somewhere. But if you're trusting God for a miracle, something's going on in your life. Maybe loved ones around you are pulling you down. The enemy's using them to pull you down by their actions and the things that they're doing. You want deliverance from those invading thoughts in your mind. Some who are watching, you may be caught up in pornography, thinking that it's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe drugs, maybe alcohol. You can run to all the AAs and the DAs and the NAs and all the secular programs you want to. And time and time again, you see them fail miserably. They only have a 25, 30% success rate. But God. But God. But God, that at the name of Jesus, He's worthy. I'm going to close in prayer right now. I'm going to close. If you need Him, if you need God to touch you today, whatever that thing is, I want you to come up right now to the altar. I'm going to pray with you. It's not me. It's not me. 
I'm going to pray with you that your faith will be in him and through him and his faith and his name will make you whole. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. The rest of you, please, I'd like you to just put your hands forward toward them and pray for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this day, God's going to restore. That's the word he put in my spirit right now. Restore. Restore the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm have destroyed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pastor Tom, will you come and help me, please? There is no other name. No other name. No other name. I want you to pray as I lay my hand on you. As I lay my hand on you, I want you to pray for that thing that you're up here for. Don't tell me what it is. I'm going to agree with you. But we're going to pray according to his will, too. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lord, I pray, God. I bind any spirit of fear. Any spirit of fear for her children in the name of Jesus. You said in your word that perfect love casts out fear. Make her perfect in that love. Strengthen her, O oh God. There's something that the Lord just put in my spirit. That I believe you've been battling with and it's disappointment. Father, I pray, God, that she would not be disappointed with her family, her immediate family. But God, I pray that she would be ready for the appointments. In Jesus' name. Jesus, oh, there it is. Lord, I just pray for Casey right now. Father, I pray that this young man will fall more in love with you. And by falling more in love with you and committing to you, Lord, he'll be a better boyfriend, a better son, a better person. Not because of himself, but because of the commitment he's made to you. That you begin to open doors for him, Father, that were closed in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that he would do everything that needs to be done according to your word. And that he would walk worthy of the calling that you have called him in Jesus' name. Lord, heal any wound in his spirit, any wounds in his heart, God. Heal him, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, restore unto her the joy of your salvation. Renew a right spirit within her, Lord. Strengthen her, O oh God. Give her the faith that she needs in the decision-making that she needs to do. Lord, I pray, God, that every emotion would be set aside and she would, she would make those decisions according to what is right, according to what is needed. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 
every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that you are Lord God. I pray for Lori right now, God. You see her heart. You see what's going on, Lord. Hallelujah. She loves you, God. Lord, she loves you. And you love her with an everlasting love, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that she will trust you. She'll trust you with the whys. Why this, Lord? Why that, Lord? I pray that she'll trust you with her whys. In the name of Jesus. Soon and very soon. Hallelujah. Breakthrough for her, Lord. Breakthrough for her in Jesus' name. Let prayer for your back. What do you want prayer for? Yes. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me just say this to you, Lloyd. And I was going to pray for you. I saw like a truck. And you know, if you load up a back of a truck, it only can take so much weight before it starts to affect the shocks until it affects hitting the wheels and the truck can't move. And it's like you've cast all of this stuff on you. It's like you're that truck and everything is piled up on you. All of these things that you're going through, all the decisions you've got to make. And God says, cast all your care upon You don't have to worry about your wife and children and food and a place to live. He said he's going to take care of you. He knows you have a mortgage. He knows you have car payments or what other bills you have. He knows all about that. That's where you're getting your eyes off of yourself and in your own human effort and putting your trust in the everlasting supply of God himself even from sources that you don't even know even from resources that you don't even know God could have men walk up to you with $100 $200, $500 can, people can mail you money it's happened to me and I know God can supply all of your need according to his riches and glory so I pray Father God for all of these things that are coming on him Lord, all these worries and cares and Lord, the pressure, Lord, and leaving work and quitting his job and going to school full time. It's all under your control, God. And I pray that you lead and guide him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, he will meet your need. If he doesn't, then he's a liar. Because his word says, I will meet your need according to my riches and glory. Trust him. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Shh. No other name. Description. No other name. Touch him, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Touch your body. <clears throat> Touch your body. Woo. <laughs>
Yes. 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 There's no other name. There's no other name. No other name. Touch your feet, Lord. Touch your, your hips, Lord. Touch that man, Lord. things that God told me and he does this quite often to me when I think I can't take any more with ministry, life situations, circumstances, you know the Lord always tells me this extend your, pen, your tent pegs I'm stretched out, Lord, as it is. I can't go a little bit more. He says, no, I'll stretch it out. Stretch out your tent pegs. You know what? If you have a tent, you know, sometimes you need to make it tighter. You take your tent pegs and you pull it out and make it tighter. Give it a little more room. God's saying that to you, honey. you got to trust him to move your tent pegs. Oh, it's uncomfortable. But the anxiety and the worry, he says, you're not supposed to do that. That's why he said, be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious. What's going to happen? What's going to, this going to, that, that's going to happen. I got to do that. I got to do that. If God can create a nation in a day, can he not take care of your problems? Amen. And worry, don't worry. Why do you worry? Look at the lilies of the field. How they need the toil not spin. Look at the birds of the air. They, they don't worry about their food. God provides everything. He provides everything. So, Father, I pray right now, God, my daughter, I pray. She loves you, Lord. He's your heavenly Father. And he loves you. Loves you more than your earthly father. No good thing, listen to me, no good thing will he withhold from them that love him. Do you love him? Yeah. He's going to bring it to pass. Okay? Just trust him. For some reason, I know that nurses have a hard time letting go of things. But if it's out of their control, they... So, so until you give it over to God, amen? So you give it over to God. Get your hands off of it. Watch, that's when he works. In the meantime, what you do is you do what David did. You just dance in the presence of the Lord. You just sing in the presence of the Lord. Oh, you're going to have the enemies attack you. You're going to have all people ridicule you. But you just dance. You just sing before the Lord, and he will provide for you. Amen. I pray, Father, that you take this anxiety away from my, my baby, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I love her with all my heart, and I pray, God, that you will meet every need according to your riches and glory. I thank you, and I praise you for her. 
keep her safe, Father. Let her know that, that your supply will outlast her supply. Hallelujah. God can go way beyond your savings. In Jesus' name, just trust him. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Anyone else as we close? Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm believing God for a great miracle this year. Here's the miracle. I'm praying and I'm believing God is going to do a miracle where each one of you are going to win five souls to Jesus. That's the miracle I want. God supplies all of my need. I have... I have money, I have a car, I have a home, I have food. God has supplied all those things for me. But that's what I want. I want God to use you so you can understand and know the joy of bringing someone to Jesus. Amen? So be open. Be ready to be able to preach the gospel to somebody. Amen? Shall we stand in closing? Amen? Let's pray for those who are missing today. Father, we pray, God, that you will touch them. Heal them, Father. Bring quick recovery to those, Lord, that some may uh, be having a cold. And, Lord, if anybody has COVID, Lord, I pray, God, that you would touch them, Lord, and heal them. Keep their families safe, God, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we thank you and praise you for this day. We ask, God, that you would have the glory and that, Lord, help us to remember that there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved, delivered, and healed. We thank you and we praise you. Now, as we go our separate way, be with us. Give us traveling mercies. And we'll thank you and praise you until we come together tomorrow night in prayer. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. God bless you.